All right, we're back with another guest today, the president of Novi Home and a good friend of mine, Cody Smith. Cody, thanks for hopping on with us today. Oh, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. I have a question, a very important question to start with. Um, what kind of shoes are you wearing? <laughs> um, new. So today I'm wearing New Balance. I don't have my Novi Nikes on. Oh um, man! So this is where I admit how out of touch I am with with everything. I, you know, I knew that you were giving away shoes. This is the second year that you've done mm -hmm. this uh, this at the Builder Show, which I think is genius. And everyone's like, they got dunks, they got dunks, and I was like, this is this is just the new slang word for shoes. I didn't realize they were a specific kind of shoe. And then Cody, I got to tell you, you've made me more popular with my own family and the, and the students that I work with at my church every Sunday, last Sunday, like I work with freshman boys and, but the seventh grade girl just came up and tapped me on the shoulder and she leans over and she goes, Hey, Mr. Oakley, I like your shoes. I was awesome. like, what? So apparently these, I mean, ex explain to me, I still don't fully understand it. These are, these are hard to get shoes. So um, you and I are in familiar t territory there. <laughs> okay. um, they were actually my first pair of dunks that I've ever owned. Um, and luckily, um, a lot of guys here in the office are sneakerheads. And they are in tune with what is popular. Um, so essentially... Like dunks is the craze with, I believe it's, I mean, this is information per Cody Smith, but I think it's right. like 14 year olds to like 30. Um, and obviously now is, is stretching beyond that. I think that's where it really started. My son, who's a sneaker head. Um, when I said, Hey, this is my first pair of dunks. He couldn't believe it. Cause he's like, Oh my gosh, dad, I've got like four bears. Um, <laughs> But yeah, That's it was, awesome. you know, it was a fun, it was a fun event and it's going to be, you know, for next year, this is kind of built last year. We did a pair of Nikes that were in Novi colors this year. We prepared a little bit better and, and we got the dunks and, and there's already debate with in the office in the Novi office right now is okay. What are we doing next year? A lot of people want to stay with the dunks, but there's some, some other ideas that are being floated around. So we'll see what happens. Exciting times, but for th for those of you who don't know what what Novi Home is and and what they do, you're not just a company that gives away shoes. You work with over a hundred different home building organizations around the country, and just give us a quick thirty second overview, and then we'll we want to dive in today and talk a little bit about some of the new features uh, that you're rolling out. Some of which were inspired by um, a mutual friend of ours, Mr. Mike Lyon. So lo love That's to hear right. more about that. But give us a quick That's overview. Right. Yeah, essentially we build custom apps for our home buyers and focus on, originally we focused on sales and marketing and that was kind of our bread and butter, the pre-sale and engaging buyers uh, pre-contract and making sure you don't have any buyers going through or falling through the cracks. And now that has grown and it's a complete buyer experience um, app or suite of apps because the the sales agent will have their app that they're working on and, and the buyer will have their own buyer app, buyer facing. That's awesome. All right. Um, and apps, apps are definitely anyway, a, a trend that are, are returning, not, not as much yet in the purchase. Um, like, let me, let me back up 2000, eight to th 2010, there was this period of everyone's got to build their own app as a home builder that, um, you know, the idea is a, a home shopper is going to go download 13 apps to go shopping and figure out which home builder they want. It seems like now the, the movement is back towards builders needing to have a solution here, but it's, it's usually more focused in a particular part of the customer journey, at least to start with, and then expanding beyond. So now, like you said, you've got multiple aspects of the customer journey that you're touching with, with different parts, but the trend, the trend's there. People are asking for this stuff. No doubt about yeah, it. It's an easy way to engage with your buyers. Obviously we can track all the analytics um, of what the buyers are looking at and help the sales teams. And that's actually one of the things we're going to talk about today is, is our analytic page that we released at IBS. Um, but essentially, it really allows the builder to 
own the their marketing and own the buyer's journey instead of that buyer. Um, I mean, I always say websites, you have to have a really good website. Website will Websites are going to make your phone ring. But at that point, are you just giving that buyer a brochure and hopefully getting them in your CRM? Or are you using technology to engage that buyer, to get that buyer in your CRM, to make your CRM work better? Um, so many of the builders we talk to, they're like, yeah, we got this all these campaigns and our CRM is fantastic. And it truly is. The only problem is, the sales agents aren't getting the buyer from the three by five card into the CRM, right? So um, that's where we step in and really complement the CRM and, and kind of the, we build our technology on gaps that we've found within the industry to create solutions other than just another product that is similar to something else. We've really tried to focus on solutions for the builders. And that means you you play friendly with as many people who you can play friendly with, right? In terms of communicating that, sh sharing that data, connecting with different CRM systems. Um, it's one of the things that, you know, just generally speaking, I always look for uh, for folks that we we bring on the podcast or or partner with with our builders at Do You Convert is a willingness to to play well with others because it's just a it's a necessity to be able to move that data around wherever the customer needs it. Uh, to get the best yeah. insights on what's going on. So let's dive into what's what's new at Novi. Yeah. Yeah. Well let's start we'll start with analytics. Analytics really basic. It's been a long time coming. Um and then we'll go into the listings which now when, when know, a builder turns on analytics, does that double their costs? Is it like an mm. extra five hundred bucks, thousand a month? What do we how does that work? I know I thought about that. I was like, you know, Need a new, need a new truck. Might need to right now. Uh, it's all included. Um, we're one of the first tech companies that believes, and, and we've done this for a long time, and it's actually catching on in multiple industries. But we believe on a, in a, a flat fee, and what you pay for, you get. You get access to everything, whether whether or not you use it today, or you wait six months to to use it. Um, you get access to everything for for the flat fee. And there's no, as of today, there's no, uh, there's no upsell charge. I guess we'd call that. Awesome. All right. So what kind of information are we seeing in the analytics platform? Yep. So analytics is, is we tried to keep this again. We try and keep our stuff very basic and user friendly. And what you can do there is, is you can pull up the analytic page. You're going to see the total number of registrations that you've had year to date or lifetime. Um, you can see how many buyers have logged in year to date, lifetime. You can break that down into a, a you know, a time frame. So if you want to see January 1st to March 19th, um, you can see all of that and it'll break that, bring that all up. Um, and then you can break that into individual sales agents. Um, so you want to see how well certain sales agents are using it or how well your traffic is and or how, what kind of traffic you have in certain models or certain communities, we can break that all down. And then we can see the engagement factor. How many photos did your team push out? How many videos were pushed out? Which agents are pushing out videos and which agents are pushing out photos? Um, and that's really the sales side of it. From a marketing perspective, we start tracking where your leads are coming from. Did they come from the OSC? Did they come from um, a Zillow lead or Facebook or walk-in traffic? And so from a marketing standpoint, um, you can now see where it's just to help those marketing doll, um, folks with with spend on on where they're spending their dollars. Um, this is information you're getting in other places. We've always collected it, and now we've just given you a really easy spot to go in and look at it. Awesome. Which yeah. is you know more data. Yes, please, everyone, all the time. Um, and the, again, the ability to then combine that data with other sources and, and essentially, well, I don't, I don't know how you, how you talk about this or think about this, Cody, but the, the challenge is always to try to find more and better sources of first party data. Obviously they're partnering with you, but when you're not charging for the data and you play well with others, then that, that means that you can get access to that data and analyze it the way that you need to versus, trying to knock on Meta's door and say, hey, excuse me, I'd like more information on the people who are clicking on my stuff. Can you send me those details and 
and you're going to be be stuck. Yeah. And the other cool thing within the analytics page is we can go in and show you what your, uh, we call them sheets, but essentially what floor plans are getting the most traffic, what community is getting the most traffic. So you're starting to see very similar to the analytics you would get from a website. And um, we're just trying to get as much data. If you have website analytics and you have Novi Home mm-hmm. analytics and you can, you can look at both of them, you're just going to be that much more effective. Yeah. And maybe we should back up a little bit for context here of, for maybe people don't understand, well, why would they have this app um, early in the cycle? It's because a lot of online salespeople and salespeople, but especially online salespeople, we're trying to get customers to install it as quickly as possible. Um, I know of a couple of builders who have it in their autoresponder as an opportunity to go deeper. I know of people who have it as their first uh, part of their first or second follow up from the online salesperson. Because then you can push notifications if they choose to allow the setting. You can track um, with different granularity what they're doing and looking at. Um, so there's there's lots of benefits to getting them for, for the builder, but also for for the customer to be able to have. Yeah, this. for for the for the customer, it's just ease of access, right? Mm-hmm. I'm I'm sitting in the dentist office. My kid's getting some dental work done, and I'm I've got Instagram, I've got Facebook, I've got something else. Oh, hey. Um, let me look at a browser homes and I pull yep. that up and all of a sudden I'm, I'm browsing. And with us, with what we do, we try to make everything we do um, proactive. So as that buyer is browsing homes for browser homes um, or communities, or maybe it's a purchase incentive or whatever it is, we're tracking all that. Number one, the sales agent that's going to attach to that buyer is going to get all, a push notification saying, Hey, you have a buyer that's engaging. Here's what they're looking at. Number two, um, every morning we send a recap email out to every sales agent that says, hey, here's the seven buyers that logged in yesterday, and here's everything they looked at. Um, So when the agent walks in, they've got the notifications on their phone. They've got access to the email. Um, That helps the sales team, but that that puts your marketing dollars in play. Like instantly your sales team is getting information on what the buyers are looking at, which is more effective for everybody. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that's a bit, that's, I mean, the price is right. And who doesn't want more insight into what's happening and going on? So that's, that's awesome to hear. And then let's talk about the, the, the other kind of more complex thing that maybe people yeah. aren't as used to, to hearing or seeing in our industry. Super heavy lift. Um, and it is credit to, um, Mike Lang, he got us going down this path. Um, and it's a funny story. I actually have all the notes. Um, and I want to say it was either, I think it was December 28th or, or November 28th of 2022. He called me and he was like, Hey, I I'm thinking about buying this truck, but that's not why I'm calling you. The reason why I'm calling you is they have this eye packet where they can send information out on that vehicle and you can browse it um very easily and just see that that vehicle and then you know they can send information on multiple vehicles and we started to collaborate a little bit on what this would look like um it sounded like and when me and mike were talking about it i was like yeah we can have this up in 60 days this is going to be an easy lift <laughs> i took the better part of 2023 um and now into 2024 to get this to where uh, we really want to, when we release stuff, we want it to be high quality and we don't want it to be real buggy. Um, And so to get to the point where like, okay, we're ready to release this, but essentially what listings is, is it gives our sales agents the ability to go out and essentially choose a floor plan that they are, you know, a spec, style something that is being per- or being built and they can start to add buyers to this spec or this floor plan um and so you could have a listing that has 20 different buyers that are interested in it and the buyers are going to see that there's 20 other interested parties they Ooh. won't see who they are right um little amazon little hotels.com yeah. action yep yeah. like that um and then every time your sales agent up sends an update on that particular listing, everyone is updated. 
So all 20 people that are interested. And so if you go in and you do um, photos of foundation and you send that out with a, you know, hey, progress we're super photos, excited. change of description, price changes, purchase incentive, price changes. Yep. That's awesome. Everything. And you can have buyers attached to multiple listings. Um, we will then attach to the builder's XML feed. So any QMI, uh, quick move in, move in ready homes that they are updating on their website will automatically update in the listing side. And that'll allow your, your buyers to go in and follow homes that you maybe didn't um, highlight for them. Um, I think this is awesome. Here, here's one of the things that I love about this. Obviously, the technology itself and this and the targeting opportunities and and push notifications to customers, that's all big. From a from a 10,000 foot level, what I would just say is ever since the pandemic, it's been somewhat shocking how much of people's attention and energy has gone towards selling communities and builders instead of individual homes. And this kind of just this nudges us back to reminding everyone that if you have inventory that you build as a company, you have to be excellent and it should be more or less a manufacturing process. You got to get really creative about quote unquote selling or marketing uh, lifestyle and community and builder and area, but like getting rid of one home at a time on an assembly line like fashion, this is a tool that's going to be great for that. That we, I mean- People are, people just really struggle with, I have this one home that I can't sell, Kevin. And now we've got another tool to help, help get that home sold. Yeah. And it'll be, it's going to grow and it's already like Rachel with Red Door Homes called me earlier this week. We we're on a conversation. She's like, I can't wait for, I can't wait for listings. And I was like, wait a minute, you're, on, you're on your lot. I didn't really envision this working for you and she said no i want to be able to allow people that are interested in a similar style home to the one that we're building the progress of that home mm. I, was, uh, I think that's how she was explaining i still we we still need to understand yeah, that it. makes she sense was, she was super excited and i was like it threw me off because i was like oh i didn't expect this to be a feature for on your lot builders um it will continue to grow it. I mean, there's features within it where if, and this was something that we added in because of 2023 and 8% interest rates. But if you have a buyer that falls out, let's say the, the home goes under contract and mm -hmm. all of a sudden they oh. fall out, that, that contract falls through. You can literally hit a button. The home is now live. It notifies everybody that was following that home and you're now back to selling um and engaging that's so cool it'll be fun it'll be fun it's um it's a big lift because it's actually part of another feature that we'll be releasing this year which is our build tracker which our our partners have asked for forever and that is essentially the ability to track the progress of your home as you're being as it's being built and um the listings had to be released first so that we had the back end infrastructure to then release uh, the build tracker. Because um, you already but, had it core to what Novi did was allow communication and photo sharing and file sharing back and forth. But now you're, you're essentially saying it'll be kind of connected along the timeline of the construction process if the home is in process. Correct. And it'll remind the sales agent, hey, this home is at foundation or this home is at framing and we need to upload some photos or there needs, mm. needs to be some communication. This home needs to progress. Yeah. Um, and that allows from a buyer's perspective, uh, there's so many cool things. I shouldn't even be talking about this, but from a buyer's perspective, they're going to get the progress updates. And there's cool things you can do as a builder because you just send out eight photos of framing with a description of what this looks like and what to expect next. But does a survey follow that? Um, is there other things that you need to add in as a builder that you want to follow up as far as a touch point with the buyer post contract that they've now moved into the house? How do we ask for a referral? 
um, you know, so many cool things that will be in this build tracker, but that is all based off of the infrastructure of the listings, which is why it was such a heavy lift for us. Ooh, I still have more so integrations long. too, because you're in an ideal world, you want, you would want surveying, um, information built into that same timeline, right? So all yeah. the survey companies, you need to call Cody and beg him to, uh, to get, to get you built in to some of that. Yes, that's, that's actually awesome. that was actually what Rachel and I were talking about when she then went into listings and was like, "This is this is why we're so excited from an on your lot perspective." Well, I, I love the uh, the perspective there. It's not surprising to me that Rachel would be the one to come up with it because my my core belief is always that when people are shopping or thinking about making a big purchase, car, home, uh, things on that level, they are obsessed in ways. You know, I, for a long time I've just said they're they're like zombies. But they're just drawn, instead of trying to eat someone else's brain, they're just obsessed with finding more information, more data. And that's why they watch the same 20 episodes of House Hunters that are basically the same with just different people every day because yep. they're just obsessed with the concept. And so, of course, if you could, essentially what you're allowing a builder to do in theory is turn on a channel, like a streaming channel of sign me up just to watch content around this particular floor plan get out of town, like sign, sign me up for that. If I think I'm interested in a particular floor plan, that is exactly the type of thing I want to obsess over. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's going to be, it's going to change. I already know because we're getting feedback um, from, you know, we always call our builders and our partners and say, Hey, this is, this is what it's looking like. Any mm -hmm. thoughts? And they're coming up with stuff we didn't even think about, which is what I love about building technology and building it with, good partners within the industry is the greatest ideas. And I told Mike this, I said, look, we don't come up with the greatest ideas. We just listen really good. We communicate with our partners, see what y'all need. And then we go back to the lab and, and try and try and create a solution for you. Yep. Um, but the feedback we're getting right now is, is super eye opening. I'm like, wait a minute, we can do that. That is crazy. <laughs> oh, we do need to add that. Uh, yeah. So it's going to be a fun year for us from an innovation standpoint. It's awesome. That's awesome. Anything else, Cody, we need to let people know yeah. before we run out of time? The only, the only thing I can think of is I believe today is March 19th, which is a special day for you. Yeah. It's, it's your my birthday. birthday. So I'm, happy I'm an birthday. older man. Thank you. <laughs> I'm to the point in my life where I just want the day to be over. Oh my gosh. Let's, yeah. Let's well, and by the time, by the time this episode goes live, it will be too late to sign up, but you, we're sharing, you're sharing all about the, the Novi home uh, March madness bracket that you got going on. Right. All I want to yeah. know, Cody, is who did you pick to win it all? I've got so Purdue. I even, so it's interesting. I was thinking Purdue this morning. I haven't done my bracket. I like, I, I I haven't done a great job of following college basketball oh, this year, yeah, which usually I'm, uh, usually I do well, but this year, here's the deal. I got four kids. One of them's a senior in high school and middle schoolers, elementary school. <laughs> I'm just, I'm getting beat up right now. Um, but Purdue is at the top of my list for sure. I like the, the big center they have. I, it starts, his last name starts with an E, but he just, um, I think you just set a record for the most points scored at Purdue as a player. So. I just picked the the Big Ten team most likely to win, in my opinion. That's it. And then I then I work backwards. I fill in all the rest. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll awesome. see how it goes for you. All right, Cody. Thanks for joining us. And uh, link in the show notes to everything about uh, what we talked about today uh, or to connect with Cody. Reach out. Say hello. All right. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate your time. You bet.